Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Piper Jasmine and today I'm gonna be doing a pretty requested video. I hope you guys like my new setup. I just moved into my apartment um, for medical school, so look out for the move-in video and stuff like that. I'm gonna do an apartment tour when my apartment's together because it's not. But yeah, so I'm gonna be doing a pretty requested video. I already have a couple of videos out. That I've already talked about my medical school cycle, such as like all the schools that I applied to and videos related to my medical school application cycle but this video specifically i'm going to be sharing with you all how i increased my mcat score from a 495 to a 505 in two months yes i said two months a 10 point mcat score increase in two months so i'm going to be sharing with you all my tips and tricks because i know like applying to med school and the mcat like all of that is just so overwhelming and so frustrating though so i'm going to share with you all the tips that i did that helped me be successful in my application cycle. So I'm not gonna go too much in depth about like my extracurriculars and my background and all of that. I have tons of other videos for that. I really just wanna keep it, get straight to the point with it. So I took my first MCAT exam May of 2022 and I scored a 495. I knew I was gonna score really low based on my practice exam. Um, I really just wasn't prepared to take it at May, but it was too late to cancel and change it. So I was like, let me just take it. I then took my second MCAT in July of 2022 and I scored a 505. That still submitted my application. I think I submitted it in late June or early July. So I was just really banking on this July test score. So if you're kind of in that predicament, I wouldn't really say to not still submit your primary and stuff like that because because A, it takes weeks for your primary to process. So you can take a whole nother exam before like schools are really looking at giving out secondaries and stuff like that. So one of the first things that I did was I got a prep course. There are tons of different things that about prep courses I really just think it comes down to who you are individually and how your your learning style is and if you need a lot of structure I think for me I needed a lot of structure because my first go around I was really using just like test prep book um, I found the Kaplan book I was using a little bit of Anki not like I should have been and really just like free resources but I feel like too that really made, made it easier for me to kind of skip over things that I didn't know well because you know it's not like I had any additional prep or any additional you know resources right there at that moment if I was reading over for example amino acids I didn't really learn amino acids and biochem so you know when I read it in my prep book I'm reading it but am I really grasping what's going on or am I just reading you know what I mean like am I reading and I'm going to be able to apply it in scenarios and in problems or what and so I feel like a prep course like it just goes in depth a little bit more for what those topics are and obviously you can spend more or less time on whatever that concept is I got the blueprint live online court um i think it was around 1600 but y'all i recommend blueprint to everyone like literally everyone i really love the videos the videos were about like 10 to like 13 14 minutes they were not that long i didn't really utilize practice exams and the test bank questions that much come to the diagnostic test so i did do the diagnostic because that's how they create your study plan and stuff like that but i would always use their questions like as my my very last thing because I also had the AAMC test prep bundle and I also had UWorld and you know it's like I'm gonna use UWorld over the blueprint questions so I really loved blueprint it really gave me a lot of structure and it really was able to hone down like all of the high yield material for things that you needed to know for the exam you know like the videos contain the information that you really need to know if I didn't get it I would replay it you know it was it was cute I like blueprint okay so my next tip slash strategy is learn and practice different test taking strategies um I really like to watch different YouTube videos kind of like the other YouTube videos that I would watch would I love to watch walkthrough videos and walkthrough videos typically like MCAT tutorer or those who scored in the very like high percentile like 90 percentile scores they go over how like how they answer the questions like they just walk through their entire thought process their solving process all of that and one channel that I really loved was informing future doctors is that what it's called yeah informing future doctors I'm gonna link them down below and stuff and I learned so many different strategies and when I was spending my whole summer like waking up going to sleep like shit in my 
sleep, studying. So, you know, I'm having time. I'm able to have time to adjust my strategies. If I didn't like this method, I would try a different one or I would watch another video to try one. And so I forgot like who said this, if this was on informing future doctors or someone else, somewhere else. But it's basically a quote saying the MCAT is not that hard. Like the questions that they ask, they truly are not that hard. It's just the way you approach it because it's concepts that you're supposed to know and be familiar with because you did it in undergrad. Oh my God, y'all, my nails are broke. Like if y'all see that in the video, just ignore. And like that really blew my mind when I watched that video because even just rephrasing the question that is they're asking on the MCAT can make a world's difference on how you solve it and getting the right answer. So it's just finding those test taking strategies. Like the MCAT, you have to be a good test taker. And I would bet money y'all, if I had more than two months, like I would have scored a lot higher. I only had two months. It's how well of a test taker you are in terms of practicing and finding strategies for your timing. Like especially with the car section, all of that is super important. Like knowing the information is important, but so is knowing how the test works. That's important. So definitely look up some strategies. And like I said, I'm gonna link down um, some channels that I use. So next is uh, for me, my second time around, I really took the time to understand my cycles. Like I said, in biochemistry, my biochemistry class at UGA, it did not go in depth the way that it should have went for preparation for graduate studies. Um, so like glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, um, shoot, lipolysis, lipo genesis i don't know i did not know them like at all i really just knew reversible and irreversible steps but actually knowing the whole cycle of glycolysis and the press cycle and like the how the electron transport chain like literally i did not know that and for the mcat that is very test heavy and so it's a very overwhelming um concept metabolic pathway so when i first took my mcat that was something that i always just skipped over because i was already so uncomfortable with it but my second time around, I was like, I just going to make glycolysis my bitch. Um, I really took the time to sit down and like draw out my cycles. And one YouTube channel that I loved and recommend is Ninja Nerd. The videos were kind of long. However, by the time my MCAT came around, I was able to draw out like the whole cycle of glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. You know, all of their enzymes and their byproducts, literally everything. I was coming up with acronyms and I could just draw it out from memory. So when I saw those questions, it was so easy. Like, I think as soon as my test started, I just drew it out on the little sheet that you get. But those are like, give me questions. And you know, it's little changes like that that can help boost your score too. Like if you literally just know, you know, your intermediates or your enzymes, your byproducts, what step is this and like all the different relationships that can help boost your score. So that really helped me. My next tip is to do a practice exam at least once every week or once every two weeks. I not do practice exams for my first exam. Granted, I was online pledging for a sorority and that was a wild time. Like I just, there was literally no time to study. However, I still wanted to get into medical school. So one thing that I really had to make time for over the summer was my practice exams. And practice exams, like once again, that helps you kind of determine what strategies you're gonna use and take with you on test day practice exams are going to let you know what sections you still need work on or like what sections you're really strong in and practice exams will help you get more in the field and more into the zone that you can replicate on test day because you don't want to go on say like not doing a practice exam and not knowing the timing or anything like that all needs to be taken accounted for and also just building your stamina the MCAT is what a seven and a half eight hour exam you have to build your stamina because that fatigue hits you hard especially after cars but you can't like you can't give up because you're only halfway done with the test like no do your practice exams it's hard and I think anyone will tell you this but if you're truly dedicated and locked in you will do your practice exam okay so next tip is to take accountability in the material you don't know I kind of talked about this a little bit but really honing down on material that you don't know and being honest with yourself can really help you just gain a better understanding in those concepts and understand other relationships so when you get into your exam you're able to make very easy connections with different concepts and hopefully get the answer right next i would say increase your anki intervals each week i think of up about the week of my exam i was probably doing like 800 to a thousand cards a day i 
can't exactly remember the method to my madness. I do remember I would do cards in the morning and I would do cards at night. So whether that was like 500, I think my goal would be 500 cards in the morning, 500 cards at night. And it's like, once again, when you're locked in and in the zone, this does not take that long. Like 500 cards took me an hour, an hour and a half. Definitely not past an hour and a half or two hours. Um, stuff should be coming at you really quickly, like especially the week of your exam. And one thing that I like to do, cause I'm a repetition kind of girl, I would go through certain sets every single day. Like every single time I did my card reviews because I am so guilty of just freezing up. And obviously I'm human too, so I would forget some things. But there are just some things, like high yield things, that I was like, I need to know this from like front to back, top to bottom. Like I can't get this answer wrong on my exam day when it comes up because if you look up, like just on Google, there are certain high yield content that you will like 110% see on your exam. Not just not believe those people telling you this is high yield. There's some shit that has popped up on both of my exams. Like those are give me points. Um, so I use the Miles Down Anki deck and I got that off Reddit. Um, of course link that in the description below but like certain sets that I would do every day would be my amino acid so I would do the structure and I would do the like abbreviation form and just knowing if they were like aromatic or non-polar polar hydrophobic go over those every single day because once again those are easy questions I would also do equations every day even though I said take accountability I never took accountability for physics physics scares me so I would do some equations because they're there could be some stuff that like if you know the formula give me questions so i would do equations and i would probably do some of psych definitely the different like stages of development it was something like that that was on like every exam that i took even practice exam um next i would recommend to do at least 30 u world questions a day um by the time my exam was approaching i have like my notes on here so by the time my exam was approaching i do half a section two sections a day and i I would just choose my sections i think that i tried to do like cars every day because at a certain point y'all ours was my lowest score ever i think yeah no my first practice no my first exam i think i scored like a 15 percent in that percentile and then my second exam i got 90 percent percentile in cars i don't even know how that shit happened but it happened so after my blueprint that's really when i started doing the split of morning and night because i I, I was studying a lot of the time, but not, I don't think I was studying like every second of the day, like take your breaks, you know what I mean, <laughs> go to the pool. But I would do my Anki and I, I would do my U World questions in the day or in the afternoon and then I would do some more at night. So with my U World, like let's say every Monday I was doing car in the morning or it doesn't have to, I can switch it up. A section would have like what, 50 questions? I don't remember, 50 something. So I was probably doing 20 to 25 questions of two subjects a day. So whether that would be the psych, cars, or biochem, and physics, I would do two sections a day around 20 questions. And that's just to get a variety. And also it's still not like overwhelming because you don't want to study too much that you're not really grasping what you're studying because you're so tired and you just want to be done. Okay, so next, oh, I already touched up on this, but look at high yield questions. I already talked about that, but definitely just take a really good peek of that. Um, and then I did say I did, I tried to do cars every day because it was my lowest. And lastly, I would recommend to practice everything with timing. Now, obviously I feel like when you're first starting, you know, you can't get too hard on yourself with your time, but when your exam date starts approaching, those you world questions, do it time. Because even if it's just half the section, you get half the time, so you're still practicing the pace that you need to be at, especially with cars, y'all. Especially with cars, because I remember my first exam, like I had so many cars questions that were blank, I just didn't make it through it. And I think both exams, I never, I never was able to completely finish the first section. So like, you know, all of this stuff, it does reflect and show on your, on exam day. And you wanna be as prepared and confident as possible because you won't, you're gonna kill the exam. You have to, you have to. <laughs> you might have to wait another cycle. <laughs> 
but yeah so those were all of my tips you guys for how i increased my mcat score by 10 points in two months so i hope you guys were able to take away something from this like i said i'm gonna put like all of my resources that i use down in the description box below and if you guys enjoyed this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe let me guys know if you have any other medical like application related questions before i start school <laughs> i don't know how quickly i'll be able to get my videos out but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you next time